This is my new custom dirt bike stand, and this is how it was built. What's up Machine Freaks and welcome back to another 3D Machines production. I'm extremely excited for today because we are going to do something that I don't usually do and that is get our hands on some awesome equipment and, and make something completely custom that can benefit the channel. So as you guys know, two of you guys actually sent me dirt bike stands and what's really ironic about that is two people sent them within like two days of each other. I've said it before, I'll say it again, we have like a family here. We all think the same, we all kind of have that same kind of fetish, if you, if you will, of uh, you know making things work and making things happen. So as you guys know, I currently have three bikes. The KTM is the newest bike, and two stands don't really benefit three bikes. So that's what we're doing today. We're building the third stand, but this one's gonna be custom. Since it's the third stand, we gotta make it 3D machines approved. So here's the first sheet of material that I purchased. You can get this at any local steel shop. detail on the sheet of steel I'm using. It's 8th inch A36 steel. It's steel, it rusts. Imagine this is a big piece of cookie dough and you want to make as many cookies as possible. So what we're doing is we have our first piece right here. We're going to try to cookie cut as many pieces as possible. Because the less material we use, the more money we save and the more efficient the project is. <laughs> If you look at this stand, it's going to be similar to this design, just it's going to be 3D machine, so it's going to be way better. You see how the plasma cutter is moving without actually cutting right now? We're doing that to make sure that we're not going to pass over material that's already cut. The reason for that, like I said, is we want to use as little material as possible. pieces cut. Two of the pieces say 3D machines and then two of the pieces are like this they just don't have anything. But just to show you how efficient we cut these there's actually a small chunk missing out of this one because we cut it so close to another piece to get it as efficient as possible. So we just have one minor, you're not even gonna see it. Nothing I'm going to sweat about, that's for sure. Now for visual effect, I'm going to go ahead and so hungry that I didn't film a little bit. But we took this machine right here and we tigged up what this project will look like. As you can see, it's got some tacks. 
here and there. I'm going to tack it up more because we're pretty sure that we're going to use the robot to weld a lot of this. Not because I'm lazy, because I want to show you the sophistication of the machinery in this facility. Um, this is actually where I went to school. Uh, it's called Jamestown Community College. I got my welding degree here. And basically I used all the tools that I'm using right now. We used the plasma cutter, which was right here. And it's all on this computer. You just plug in a flash drive and then this machine cuts it out for you. Automation speeds a lot of things up. And if you were to make this in bulk and put this on a shelf, these would be the processes you'd be doing. But after cutting these five pieces out, this hole is for oil. You know, you can drain your oil on your bike or your four-wheeler if you really want to put a four-wheeler up in on here, which would be pretty difficult, but you want to make it happen, you can make it happen, right? When people say you can't, at least to me, I always say, I can. How many people are like that? When somebody says you can't, that makes you more determined than ever to do the things that they say you can't. Let me know. Now, if we do end up doing this with the robot, we don't want anything to warp, so I'm going to tack it up very, very well, but it is turning out to be pretty sweet. Oh, I think I forgot to mention, we're getting burgers for lunch. I'm looking forward to it. I like a good burger. So for you guys out there that don't have a lot of welding knowledge or you're interested in potentially becoming a welder or something along those lines, the reason why I hold my tungsten to this piece after I'm done welding it is because there's gas protecting the weld as the weld cools down. It keeps the weld stronger, keeps it away from the moisture in the air or the atmosphere. Lunch was delicious, time to go back to work. We are currently working with the robot right now and we have one of the sample pieces that came out of one of these cutouts. I tacked them up, but we're just dry running it to make sure the wire is going to ride this seam well. As you can probably tell, this robot is very sophisticated. It's, it's really cool. What you guys didn't see because we accidentally covered it up with this weld was the first inch we didn't like, the second inch we didn't like, third inch we didn't like, the last inch was looking pretty good, so then we ran that right here. And I think this is what we're going to run. $100,000 robotic welder coming in clutch. And I'm not sure if you guys could tell, but this was all one weld. It was all one program. This thing is awesome. actually welded two sides right now this side and this side and if you actually come in here you can see that it's blood through so this is how the stand came out Came out wonderfully in my opinion. I think it has the capability of holding a little bit more than a dirt bike, wouldn't you say? How many of you wish you had a big yellow automatic welding robot? I know I do. Thanks for tuning into this 3D Machines production. Don't forget, we upload every day. Until tomorrow, 3D Machines out. Yeah.